Hi, I'm Shanti Feldhahn, and I want to tell you a little bit about my new book for women in the workplace. This book is based on seven years of research into what men are privately thinking and feeling in all sorts of areas that we as women tend not to get, but that tends to affect us. Let me tell you a little bit about how I got here. Several years ago, I published two different books for women only and for men only to help women and men understand what they just tend not to get about each other. These books have sold over 1 million copies and have been published in 15 different languages for two reasons. First, I focused entirely on the surprises, the things that men and women just tend not to get about their mate, but their mate really wishes that they knew. But the second reason is that what I was saying is not just my opinion. For example, I have done hundreds of personal interviews with businessmen around the country, everyone from the president of a Fortune 50 company all the way down to the guy on the assembly line. And I culminated all of that research with a scientific nationally representative survey of businessmen around the country. In the end, over 3,000 men provided input for this book. Over the last 20 years, corporate America has developed a tremendous number of initiatives to help women advance, to help attract and retain women. We have done leadership development, we have done female networking and mentoring, we've done training on on-ramps and off-ramps, and many companies have developed great work-life balance programs and lots of flex time options, and all of that is wonderful. But I've realized that out of that bucket of programs, there's still a hole in the bucket. We as women can be skilled and talented and educated and networked and still shoot ourselves in the foot without ever knowing it, simply because we do not understand how we are being perceived by our male colleagues in the workplace. Let me give you just one example of the type of surprise that I'm talking about, how men view emotion. It is not just crying. If men see someone getting defensive or upset, if they see someone sort of refusing to be swayed from their opinion, if they see someone making a mountain out of a molehill, or even personality conflicts, any of those things they could view as someone getting emotional. One male consultant that I interviewed, for example, told me that because his female colleague got really defensive in a meeting, he decided he couldn't trust her judgment of the entire meeting. In this book, I am not telling women what to do with this new knowledge. I am simply passing along my findings and this information that they probably don't know about men so that they can make their own informed decisions about their approach to the workplace. I expect this new knowledge to be intriguing, empowering, surprising, and ultimately very helpful to women.